Hallelujah. Anybody got a little joy down in their soul? Clap your hands and praise them. Have a little old school church. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You know, a lot of y'all new generation, y'all don't know about that beat right there. That's that old school beat that'll make you move a little. Thank you, Lord. Come on, clap your hands and give them praises. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come on, if you love the Lord, clap your hands and praise him. I said, if you love the Lord, clap your hands and praise him. Clap your hands and lift him up because he's worthy. Come on, look at somebody and say, he's worthy. Come on, say, he's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah, we shall rejoice and be glad. Anybody just glad to be in the number? Hallelujah. Amen. The old folks used to sing a song. They say, I'm just glad to be in the number just one more time. Amen. You know what number they was talking about? They was talking about that number of the people that was living. Yes. Said, I'm so glad that I'm in the church. I'm in that number with people that can lift their hands. Hallelujah. People that can put their hands together. People that are breathing. The Bible says, let everything that have breath. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We're so grateful. Amen. I couldn't shake this thing from this morning. We was at the restaurant. I still felt the glory of God. Hallelujah. When you just get a taste of something that God, amen, is doing, it'll make you, amen, it'll linger on you. Somebody shout hallelujah. You know, back in the world, hallelujah, when you drink so much and then you go to sleep, you wake up, they have something called a hangover. Lord, have mercy. I think I experienced a hangover. I still feel good right now. I need to grab hold of somebody had and say, neighbor, after my shot this morning, I still feel good. I still got a praise. I still got a hallelujah. I still got a leap. I still got my joy. Oh, somebody shout, victory is mine, and I can feel it from the crown of my head down to the sole of my feet. I got the victory. Yes, I do. Oh, somebody shout, glory. Hey, y'all, my mouth. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. We appreciate the Lord. Hallelujah. Still feel pretty good. Thank you, Jesus. We do honor him. We praise him. All the glory goes to him. None of the glory goes to us. In fact, the Bible says that when we're in his presence, our flesh can't get no part of the glory in his presence. Amen. We're so appreciative of God. We thank God for the leader of Church of God of Bible Way, my pastor and father, Apostle C.A. Coward. Hallelujah. Thank God for the bishops, the presiding bishop, Bishop Ira J. McLeod, and the board of bishops. Amen. Our district overseer and hallelujah, our district elder. We thank God for them, all of the pastors. Amen. Thank God for my son being here. Amen. That's out there pastoring in North South Carolina, Minister Joshua Johnson. Thank God for all of these ministers, Minister Frankie. Amen. Minister Leron. Amen. Minister Singleton. Thank God for each and every one of you all that are present. Amen. Tonight, expecting God to do something. Amen. Look at somebody and say, my miracle is right here with me. Hallelujah. You know, when you make a declaration like that, that it ought to make you praise and when you know that there's something that you need. Amen. From the Lord. Amen. I'm not going to hold you too long. Amen. I want to get out your way. But as we continue to preach Jesus, amen, if you want to hear a different message, come to Bible study. But 
As Sundays, amen, is dedicated to Jesus and to preach Jesus. Amen. And it makes me feel good when I'm preaching about, amen, my Savior, my Deliverer, my King, my Redeemer. Amen. I talked about Jesus being the bartender, amen, this morning. Hallelujah. And tonight I want to talk about Jesus being lit. Amen. Yes, Lit, you're lit, he lit, she lit, hallelujah. But the real person that's lit is Jesus. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. And I found out as I was praying, amen, and amen, as I was laying down before the Lord, amen, God, amen, spoke to me, hallelujah, and was saying as I was mentioning See, Jesus could be lit and be a fire and a drink all at the same time. And I don't know about you, but if people ever drink in the world and they take a shot of something, what happens is when it gets down in their chest, it starts to burn a little bit. Lord, I wish I had somebody here with me. And so the way God is, when we consume them, we can feel the fire burning down on the inside. Lord, I wish I had somebody here with me. Go down there to Jeremiah. Let me show you what he said there. And we need Jesus to be lit in us. Hallelujah. And I was praying and the Lord spoke to me and said that everybody, amen, in the house of God, amen, they have a pilot light that's on. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And hallelujah, the pilot light is there for when, amen, the igniting come to set you completely on fire. And what I found out, amen, everybody in here, it's not by coincidence that your temperature reads 98.7 degrees. And it's because you got the pilot light on, y'all ain't with me. The pilot light is down on the inside of you. And this is, Jeremiah said something very profound. Go down to the Jeremiah. Thank you, Jesus. Look at somebody and say, uh, I got a pilot light on the inside of me. I'm just waiting for the gas. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. I'm, I'm waiting, amen, to catch fully on fire. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says this. Thank you, Lord. Uh, I said, Jeremiah. Thank you, Jesus. I believe that's chapter... Hallelujah, number 20. Chapter 20, and start at verse number 1. And it's very imperative, hallelujah, that we in fact have that fire, amen, down on the inside of us. It's very important to understand that it is Jesus that is lit, and the Bible, amen, refers to him as a consuming fire hallelujah and what that means is when he's present everything else has to bow when god amen comes to you everything else falls or bows down to him this is why he's a not just a fire but a consuming fire in essence, what that means is that when he's present, amen, all the glory goes to him. When he's present, all you can feel, you can't even feel yourself no more. This is why sometimes, hallelujah, when a person, amen, experience God, amen, it feels like it's a numbness. Like you can't even, you don't even know what's going on. Why do I feel this way? Because that consuming fire was present. And when the consuming fire is present, you can't even feel you no more. All you can do is feel God. And the problem is a lot of people can't attest to that, amen, because they spend enough time on the altar and when you spend enough time on the altar you can really feel the fire amen that burns the thing you know the fire is there to burn up all the things that's not like God oh somebody shout hallelujah and when we have things in us hallelujah that's not like God amen we need to spend some more time amen at the feet of Jesus so amen we can uh, grab hold to that light let me tell you something fire amen produces two things it produces heat and it produces light. Y'all gonna catch it in a second. Two things that only produce is heat and light. So God is in the fire because he's a consuming fire. He brings the heat. Not only do he bring the heat, but he's the light of the world. Light of the world. Somebody shout hallelujah. Watch this. Jeremiah 21 read, uh-huh. 
Now Pasher, Pasher, the son of Emmer, uh -huh. the priest, who was also chief governor in the house of the Lord, heard that Jeremiah prophesied these things. Uh -huh. Then Pasher smote Jeremiah, the prophet, and put him in the stocks that were in the high gate of Benjamin, which was the house of the Lord. Uh -huh. And it came to pass on the morrow that Pasher brought forth Jeremiah out of the stocks. Then said Jeremiah unto him, the Lord hath not called thy name Pasher, but Magra Misabib. For thus said the Lord, Behold, I will make thee a terror to thyself, uh -huh. and to all that thy friends, to all thy friends, and they shall fall by the sword of their enemies. Uh, what verse are you on? Four. All right, jump down to seven. O Lord, O Lord, thou hast deceived me. Now maybe see the brethren. Uh huh. And I was deceived. And I was deceived. So. Jeremiah is, in essence, having a problem with the lit Jesus that's on the inside of him. <laughs> he said, now, you done deceived me. You done got me out here prophesying these people. These people trying to kill me. Their, <laughs> their faces are scary. He had to remind them, don't be afraid of their faces. They're trying to figure out, well, why, why, amen, do I have to go through this? A lot of you all are going through some things, but don't know that you got the fire down on the inside of you that can control your situation. Somebody shout hallelujah. One thing about a fire is whenever it's present, it's in control. Amen. And this is why, this is how you see that. You can tell when people got fire and people that don't have fire. Amen. I'm going to tell you how. Amen. When I was in elementary school, amen, they taught us something dealing with a fire drill. They said when you see a fire, they said first thing you do is you stop. And they say you drop and then you roll. Which means that when I make an encounter with God, I'm a little bit like Paul. When Paul met him, he was astonished and he stopped. Amen. The Bible also said that he dropped. And the Bible said that he was trembling and, and astonished. So in essence, I believe that he had a fiery experience with God. And when people sit still, amen, when the, when the presence of God is there and you sit still looking cute, that means you don't have fire because fire will make you move. Fire will make you shake. Fire will make you dance. Fire will make you lift you. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. This is the fire, amen, of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. I done seen people, you, you get in the fire, amen, I done seen people with fire on the jackets or anything on the ground, what they do, they move their feet trying to stomp it out, they don't know how to get it out, that's why I praise God like I do, because there's a fire that's on the inside of me, and when I got the fire, it causes me to move, amen, the fire don't make you sit there, but the fire will make you shake a little bit, the fire will make you take yourself out of yourself, what I mean, what you mean by that pastor, well, when I see a fire, I kind of shake a little bit, and I take off because, oh, y'all ain't saying that, see, some of y'all ain't never seen a fire before you know uh, hallelujah we was at uh amen i was at wings university one day amen i'm not gonna tell you who set the fires on fire but there was a fire amen that went down there amen going on down at wings university they called me and said pastor the fire's on fire i said well, what you mean the fire on fire well it's on fire i don't know what to do well all you gotta do is grab the fire extinguisher amen and, and tear down uh, well, well, well they got so frantic and couldn't even think straight because there was a fire and that's why people amen when you're in the house of god and the fire hits you you don't even know what you're doing you don't even know why you're doing it it's because the fire is down on the inside and it will cause you to move. Somebody shout hallelujah. Look at your name and say Jesus is me. And I'm so glad that I got a homeboy named Jesus. Oh, what you mean, homo? Well, the Bible said, amen, that he was our friend. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing to me. And if he's my friend, you know, you, your friend call you, you call your friend your homeboy. And see, we got a real homeboy, amen, that's really lit. When you go out places, amen, you in the, hallelujah, you're in the grocery store. And every now and again, you're down there getting your cabbage. And because your homeboy right there with you, and he's lit, he'll jump on you. You start to shake, say, oh, glory to God. I, hey, glory to God, I feel something. Yeah, and see, some of y'all don't have a real relationship with Jesus that's lit because Jesus that's lit and he don't just come on you when you're at church he don't y'all ain't saying nothing to me some of y'all got that play play Jesus you ain't got the real lit Jesus amen that real lit Jesus will cause you to look Lord I'm missing you shopping for shoes and you put the shoes on and they're brand new and they still make it bad Lord have mercy you'll be down there in the store getting a bottle of water and say oh oh God I 
he dropped praise. That was like the living Lord offering the place. See, y'all don't know how to serve. Amen. The Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. When you know God like I know, it ain't limited. Your shout is not limited just to the church. But you can praise God in your car. You can praise God in your living room. You can well, they stand up to me. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. You. you got your neighbor and say, neighbor, Jesus is lit. And not only lit, but he lit in me. That's why I can't control myself sometimes. That's why I praise God when I'm down. That Lord have mercy. That's why I praise God when I ain't got a dime in my pocket. Because the lit Jesus down on the inside of me. It causes me to praise him. It causes me to glorify him. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Jeremiah said this reader, huh? Thou art stronger than I. Thou, he telling God, he said, in essence, you in control and you basically bullying me. <laughs> this is what Jeremiah telling God. He said, man, you bullying me. Yes. You're way stronger than I am. And you deceived me, uh huh, Reed. And has prevailed. And you prevail. I am in derision daily. I am in derision daily. Everyone mocketh me. Everybody coming for me. For since I spake, I cried out, uh -huh. I cried violence and spoil. In essence, what he's saying is that ever since you gave me a message, amen. See, some of y'all got these false prophets, a lot of false prophets out here. All they're doing is preaching houses, cars, and land. But there is a prophet that can say, if you don't get your house right, amen, God, y'all ain't saying nothing to me. We don't have those, you know, we don't have those type of prophets no more that'll tell you you need to straighten your life out. You need to straighten your house out. You just got those prophets, the P-R-O-F-I-T prophets, amen. They're the prophets that tell you how to make money, how to get the car, how to be rich. But we need a prophet, amen, that's going to tell us something. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. He said that this prophet here, he was crying out violence and spoil. Meaning he was telling them, if y'all don't do right, God going to kill you. If you don't do right, God will spoil your goods. That's what he said. Violence is small. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Read uh huh. Because the word of the Lord was made a reproach. Because the word of the Lord was made a reproach. Unto me. Unto me. And a derision. And a derision. Daily. He's telling how you feel every day ever since God started speaking out of his mouth. Uh huh. Read. Then I said. Then I said. I will not make mention of him. He said man you know what I quit. <laughs> I ain't with this prophet stuff no more. Oh my God. I ain't telling nobody nothing else. I ain't telling them who you are. I'm not telling them anything to do with, with what you got going on with oh this God. Bible or, or this uh, 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 scrolls. I ain't telling them nothing about nothing. You speak to me again, I'm just going to ignore you. This is what Jeremiah <laughs> talking to God. Yes. Read, uh-huh. Amen. Nor speak any more in his name. I ain't saying nothing else in your name. But. But. His word. The was word was in my heart. Was in my heart. As a burning fire. As a burning fire. Shut up in my body. He said, man, I, I, I'm mad at you because I want to quit, but I can't give up because that pilot light just won't yeah. turn on. I, Lord, I wish I had somebody. And see, the pilot light can't come on unless you got a little gas coming through there. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And because God, amen, blew into you, he said, and I'm prophesying, on them, I'm talking to somebody right now. It's not your time to give up. Don't give up on God, amen, because your pilot light is still on. This is why you, you said you want to come to church today and look at you. You're right here in church. You know why? Because the pilot light was on. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. You remember when you said, I, I'm done. I ain't going to church no more. I'm tired of the church. My God. Like what that little boy said, I'm tired of this church. <laughs> little boy said, I'm tired of this church. They gave him a, told him to get up there and say a speech. He got the microphone and said, I'm tired of this church. <laughs> Some of y'all got to that place and said, I'm tired yeah. of church. I'm tired of you, Lord. You know, ever since I done been in church, it seemed like I'm just going through more and more and more. Ever since I just keep the light on. My God. You Amen. keep that light on. God will visit you. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, just keep the light on. Keep the light on. Keep that pile of light on. Every time you feel like you want to give up, the fire will remind you. Hey Amen. You ever just thought about giving up and then you start thinking about all the stuff that God, y'all ain't saying nothing. All the stuff that God really brought you out of, all the things that God done brought you through. And then you start thinking about the people that you done brought to church. You say, man, you know, if I lead the church, then such and such, they might not be strong enough to stay. 
I don't know if I might leave and then this might happen. If I leave you, God, if I stop praying with such and such, then they're going to stop praying to you. You know, so that, 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 that light, it start to remind you, amen, of where you are and your connection to God. The pilot light is an indication that the gas is still on. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. As long as you got your light on, God can visit you right where you are. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. And sometimes, this is why, amen, it's good to clap the hands, amen, it's good to praise God because you know when you fan fire it seems like it grow y'all ain't saying nothing amen so hallelujah when you amen start to give God praise and you know people start clapping you clap like this in front of a fire it's gonna start getting bigger so every time hallelujah you feel like giving up just start clapping your hands and say glory to your name Jesus and watch how the fire respond after a while you'll start saying oh you start clapping your hands they say oh God I give it to you Lord I'm sorry God I repent Lord I want to get back into your prayer I want to get back into your word. Somebody shout hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, we serve a lit God. Uh, we don't serve a God. Amen like Buddha. See, Buddha needed the fire. Our God is the fire. Pastor, what you mean? Well, when you're creating a sculpture, you need some type of heat to solidify what it is. I went to a pottery class, and I think I got to go back there and get my little figure that I made. <laughs> amen. But what they did was, after we made it, amen, they took it and sat it in a place where heat was. So that it could solidify what it is. So when God chose you, this is why you get fiery trials. Lord. Amen, because the fiery trial is there to make you stronger and to make you solidify. And y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Uh, uh, so this is why God allow you to go through fiery trials. Because it make you stronger than you ever been. Somebody shout hallelujah. If you ever seen a boxer box after getting hit upside the head so many times, amen. You, you know Muhammad Ali, he done got knocked in his head so much. It was where he could just take punches. He did. And then after a while, he started, he, he ain't want to box no more. You talk to him, he just was shaking his head. He's like, no. <laughs> he ain't saying nothing. He just, head just shaking. But when you're a boxer, amen, the more hits you take, amen, the more solidified you are towards an engagement of a punch. Amen. You slap something so hard, you keep hitting it so hard, whatever you're hitting it, get used to whatever it is. You start clapping your high hands, amen, for a long time, you start getting used to whatever it is. Because you'll stop. I mean, you, it, the pain won't even worry, uh, wouldn't matter anymore. Somebody shout hallelujah. All right, so, amen, Jeremiah said that his word was in my heart. Now, we want to stop right there because his word, amen, becomes him. Lord, let me show you this. Go down there. Keep your finger there. Go down there to John chapter 1. Amen. So his word, in essence, becomes a fire because the fire is who he is or what he is. Amen. John 1 and 1, what does that say? Uh -huh. In the beginning was the word. In the beginning was the word. Was the what? The word. The word. And the word was with God. The word was with him. And the word was God. Now, this is the amazing thing about the word is because the word can become anything God wanted to be. And the Bible goes on and talks about how, amen, there's a smoke. Go to uh, Revelation. Hallelujah. That's Revelation 13. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Aren't you glad you serve a lit God? Yes. Hallelujah. And what God, amen, does, or uh, 15. Revelation 15 and verse number 8. And the temple was filled with smoke. And the temple was filled with smoke. From the glory of God. From the glory of God. So God's presence, that fire, amen, it leaves a smoke. So the smoke is in essence still God. Because that's what he left when he came by. Indication of where the fire is, you got to find out where the smoke at. <laughs> People find fires because they see where the smoke is. 
Amen. You got to be careful because sometimes the smoke is more dangerous than the fire. You talking about you better be careful of fire because you might get burned. You better be careful of that smoke because you might choke. Yes, sir. That's why you can't play with fire. Stop playing with God. That's one element you can't. Let me tell you something. The elements that will kill you is the elements that God was made of. You jump out there in the middle of that ocean and play with that water if you want. I don't care how good of a swimmer you are, but you get out there, them arms get tired after a while. You get in the middle of that Pacific. You be out there, hey man, you out there swimming. You, if you know most people, they panic when they get in the water. They start swinging, their arms get tired. And after, after a while, boy, they start going up under. So water, it's too, now, it's too much water out there in that Pacific to drink. That's too much water there. So you got water, fire, and smoke. All three of those, hey amen, could be the presences of God or what God called himself. And those are some things you just can't play with. Somebody shout hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, we can't play with God. All right, so the Bible talks about that smoke. Now, I want you to go back. Amen. Go back to Jeremiah. Hallelujah. And it's amazing how Amen. The fire could be used for heat and light, but still be a fire. Mm -hmm. It's like God, he was used as a son, but he was still God. Mm -hmm. Y'all ain't saying nothing. See, God, you, God, God did that to show his oneness. He said, if, if it's a fire, fire got heat, and not only heat, but it got light. Amen. Water, you got water in the water jug. You got water in the river, you got water in the lake, you got water in the creek, you got water in all these different places. See, when water, amen, is in certain places, it's called something. Mm -hmm. If it's out there, amen, that Pacific, it's called the ocean. Then you got some waters that's called seas. Then you got some water that's called rivers. Then you got some water called lakes. Then you got some water called ponds. Then you got some water called creeks. Then you got some water that's called ditches. All of those different things got different labels, but it's still water. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. So what God does is he, he utilizes these different things to show exactly who he is and the oneness of him. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. All right, read. Uh -huh. And I was weary with forbearing. Go back up. Uh, Jeremiah 20. And what you was on? Six. Nine, uh-huh. Then I said, Then I said, I would not make mention of him. I'm not going to make mention of him. Nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in my heart. But his word was in my heart. Now this is why it's very important for you to get a preach word. Mm, my God. Because the preach word is what catches you on fire. That's, that's that igniter. Amen. You know, you know, I know people say, well, I, I'm going to be saved and I'm going to be all right because I'm going to read my Bible at home. You can't get word in your heart by reading your Bible at your house. Because word is not read, but word is preached. So if I'm preaching this, what happens is it goes through my portals and gets in my heart. And so once it gets in my heart, when the devil try to shake me, I can't go. To, this is why the Bible said it was on lockdown. The word was in his heart, but not only was it in his heart, amen, but it was on lockdown. I mean, it couldn't go nowhere. Read, but his word was in my heart. As a burning fire. As a burning fire. Shut up in my He heart. said it was shut. My God. It was shut up in where? My bones. Wait a minute. Bible ain't said it was shut up in his heart. My bones, my God. He said that it was shut up in his bones. I don't know if you ever seen a dead body or ever seen anybody dead. You go back to that grave. Amen. The bones last the longest. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Jesus. What they used to do over there in Egypt when they used to commit and all them, they used to wrap them up. You know, the mummies and they used to rap, try to preserve those kings and stuff like that. And then after a while, they get back. The body is gone, but the bones are still there. This is why you got to get, amen, you got to get that word in your bones. Because, amen, you get cut on your skin, amen, all of them, you get, get weak. But don't let it, amen, get out of your bones. 
And when they get in there, lock it up and throw the key away. Somebody shout hallelujah. Read, uh huh. And I was weary. And I was weary. With forbearing. Uh huh. And I could not stay. And I couldn't stay. I couldn't stay in that same mindset because that fire, that fire was there. And I can't let that fire leave me. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got your neighbor and say, I can't allow the fire to go. I can't allow the fire to go. Now, this is why it's important, amen, not only to have that pilot light on, but it's very important to stay connected to the gas line. Because, amen, when you are, when you look at pilot lights, amen, you know you can blow on it. Amen. And you can blow a pilot light out. But if the fire is still there, it'll jump back on. <laughs> Y'all ain't saying nothing. Now, Pastor, why you say blowing? Go down to the Ephesians chapter 4. I got Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Amen. 4 and 11, uh huh. 12. For the perfecting of the saints, uh huh. For the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, uh huh. So we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, uh -huh. unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. Uh -huh. That we henceforth, that we henceforth be no more, no more children, children tossed to and fro uh -huh. and carried about with what? With every wind of Every doctrine. wind. <laughs> so you got to keep your pilot on, amen, and when the devil comes, you got to keep the fire right beside you because there's wind that's coming to blow your light out. Said the false doctrine, you know these false, you know when they say doctrines, the wind of every doctrine, that's false doctrine. You know somebody to come and tell you that God is three people and all that, that's false doctrine. Amen. And what happens is if you're not strong enough and you get away from the connection, once that light go out, it's out. Let me tell you something. When you get a fry, you get a fryer or a stove, anything like that, take that gas connection off of there and the fire will be present, but it can't catch on to nothing because it ain't connected to nothing. So the fire can't catch because of the connection is not there. That's why you got to stay plugged into the word. When you at your job and you, you know, they, they got all that foolishness, playing music, whatever. Put, put your AirPods in and listen to a message. The right message. Amen. We ain't talking about no messages from Paula White and all them. <laughs> Y'all ain't saying nothing. We ain't talking about no inspirational, motivational speaking. We're talking about a preach word. Yeah. And you allow that preach word to get in you. Amen. If that light start flickering, amen, you listen to that preach word, it'll get it strong back in there. It'll get it ignited again. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. All right, go down there, amen, to the book of Revelation. Let me tell you why you need the fire. Because God, not only is he a consuming fire, amen, but God... He don't like his steak medium rare. He don't like it medium well. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. And this is why he give us fire. He said because if I'm a fire, I don't want you to be lukewarm. Because that lukewarm, when it comes down to me, it becomes dangerous. So now I got to spit you out. See, just like we taste God, God can taste us. <laughs> Y'all ain't saying nothing. All right, uh, Revelation 3 and 14, huh? And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen. Uh -huh. The faithful and true witness. The faithful and true witness. The beginning of the creation of God. Uh huh. I know thy works. I know thy works. That thou art neither cold nor hot. He said, You're not cold or hot. Uh huh. I would I were cold or hot. I would rather you be honest and be yeah. cold, or if you're going to be with me, be hot. Uh-huh, read. So then because thou art lukewarm. But because you're lukewarm. And neither cold nor hot. You don't let your pilot light go on. Oh and so because God is a consuming fire, we got to stay on fire. That's why people say we got to be on fire for the Lord. Yes. My God. Somebody shout Hallelujah. So we do have too many people that are lukewarm. They're not cold or hot. God said, I'd rather, you know, the cold come in. You know, the world, you know, we talk about the world is cold. The Bible talks about it waxing cold. Yes. So the world is cold. Amen. But when you come to God, we got to be on fire for the Lord. Yes. So he said, now, if you right there down there in the middle, 
He said, you might as well just be honest. If you're going to go, if, you know, I, I tell people this, and, I, and I've been saying this since I was probably 18 years old preaching. I said, man, if I'm going to hell, I, I, I'm going to go to hell with a certificate. I'm going first class to hell. If, I'm going, if I know that I'm going to hell, I'm not about to play with God and come and, and try to worship me. If I know that I'm, I don't really love him, I know that there's no connection, I know that there ain't going to never be no connection, I'm not about to waste my time. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Oh, the pastor said, if you, oh, pa oh, that pastor. I, I, yes, and I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> ain't no need to play with God. Because the Bible talk about you deceiving yourself. If you, let's just be honest now. If you know that you don't want a relationship with God and you know you're going to hell, why not just live your life? Go out there, turn up, turn down, flip over, cartwheel, do whatever you want to do if that's the life that you choose. It wouldn't make sense to play with God and say, well, I'm going to come over there, you know, I'm going to jump and shout, run around, and when I leave, man, God, I, don't, I ain't thinking about you no more. I ain't really, you know, we don't have that type of relationship. My God. So he said that I don't want that lukewarm person. You know, the lukewarm person is here and there, here and there. So when you're here and there so much, you become in the media. So now you're on the middle ground. I ain't saying that. So God said, listen, I'd rather you be hot so I can consume you. I don't know if you ever had food. Listen, when I, I and some of y'all, uh, some of y'all have cooked for me before. I don't like cold food. I don't like lukewarm food. They come fresh. They go past it, food ready. It's at 100 degrees. It ain't hot enough. See, y'all don't even know what temperatures are. Because that's not even hot food. 100 degrees ain't even hot food. They say 100 degrees, boy, boy. When it's 100 degrees outside, boy, I'm sweating bullets. <laughs> In order for it to be a hot meal, it got to at least be 135. At least. And some meats are required to be 165. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Some people, some of y'all good eating y'all food at 90 degrees. But God said, listen, and, and the reason he said spew you out, spew you out is a way of vomiting. And what happens is if you're in between and if you're lukewarm, it makes them sick. Lord, y'all ain't saying nothing. You know when you eat something that's in that danger zone? See, what happens is, and I'm going to move forward, what happens is when food is in that temperature danger zone, what happens is it grows bacteria. And the bacteria is there, you just can't see it. So you over there eating that food that's at 90 degrees and you just, I mean, eating it up, eating it all good and, and, and going in. And that stuff will make you sick because it's not at the right temperature. So God said, when you come to me, I want you at the right temperature. That's why you got to stay at the altar. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Oh, you know, the altar is synonymous. When about, go down to the, uh, 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 Romans chapter 12. Watch this. Romans 12. Amen. Y'all with me? Yeah, somebody said Jesus is lit. Uh, you stay close enough to him, amen, you'll find yourself losing you, amen, and you'll become more part of him. So when, in the Old Testament scriptures, what they would do is, if they would fall, if they would fail, if they'll do something against God, there'd be something called a sacrifice. And what that sacrifice was, is they would take an animal and put them on the altar and allow it to burn for them, so they didn't have to burn, but the animal would burn. And so what happened is, while that animal is burning, it'll go from a flesh state, amen, to a smoke state. And so what God wants us to do, he wants us to do the same thing. Yeah. Romans 12 and 1, read, uh-huh. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies. I want you to present your bodies. A living sacrifice. So now I become the sacrifice. Mm. Uh-huh. Holy and acceptable unto God, uh -huh. which is your reasonable service. So now, when I spend time on the altar, it burns me up so that I can become the smoke, which is spirit. Mm, my God. Lord, I wish I had 25 of y'all. So when you're laid out on the altar, what happens is you make an exchange. Once that fire starts tearing you up, it starts to deal with that flesh side of you, and it causes you to become more spiritual. Can I be honest? The church is lacking spirituality because it's not on fire like it should Amen. be. 
We're not close enough to the fire because we're scared to get burned. We don't want to lose it. We don't want to lose our mind in God. Amen. Want to be dignified. My God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, let me give you this and I'm going to close here. Go to Exodus chapter number 19. Now it's amazing how the Lord visited somebody shout hallelujah. And it was amazing how God visited Moses. And you know what? I, I preached a message when I was about, how old was I? Was I about six, seven? When I preached that message about the burning bush. How old was I? It was that holy temple. Y'all remember that? Where's Sister Alicia at? She gone. Oh, how old was I? Six or seven? Huh? No, no, holy temple and, uh, I mean, what is it called? St. Mary's. I was about like six or seven. How about six or seven? I forgot I preached my first message when I was a little boy. How old was I? You remember that? I was like seven years old. My first message was about the burning bush. <laughs> Preach the message. I forgot about that. I, I, I guess I can say I started preaching at seven. No, I'm just playing. All right. Uh, where I got you at? Exodus chapter number three. I thought I did something. I was talking about that burning bush. God encountered Moses in a sense of a fire. All right, three and one, come on. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, uh -huh. his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert uh -huh. and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire. Angel of the Lord appeared unto him as a flame of fire? Out of the midst of a bush. Out of the midst of a bush. Uh -huh. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Uh -huh. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight while the bush is not burned. So God visited, and when he visited Moses, he visited him as fire. Mm. And so that's how we want to encounter God. We want to get that fiery side of God. You know, the Bible, we want to, you know, we want to feel the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, and speak in tongues. But he said he ain't just going to give you the Holy Ghost, but he's going to give you some fire with that Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Go down there to the book of Acts. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And see, we got to get to that place. Amen. When our fire is not just a jump and a shout. Amen. Y'all ain't saying nothing. All right. He let us know. Hallelujah. Go to Acts chapter 2. Start there. And then we're going to go to Luke 3 and 16, huh? Go to 2 and 3 of Acts. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. So when God came to them and they experienced the Holy Ghost, but it said it was as a fire. Go down into Luke chapter 3. 3 and 16, huh? John answered, saying unto them all, uh -huh. I indeed baptize you with water. I baptize you with water. But one mightier than I cometh. Uh -huh. The latchet of his shoes I am not worthy to unloose. Uh -huh. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Not only going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost, but he want to make sure you get a little bit of fire with that Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. So not just the speaking in tongues, but the fire is what solidify you, which deal with that word. That word. Remember Jeremiah said the word was in his heart like a what? Fire. So when it deal with the Holy Ghost and the fire, the fire comes with that word. Because, you know, see, the, the word is something that cleans you. 
And I don't know about you, but when you wash clothes, the best way to get a stain or anything out, you can't just use cold water. When you're washing dishes, you can't use cold water. You got to use hot water. Amen. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Amen. You ever had some real bad dishes and Dawn, Dawn can do whatever you want to do, but Dawn can't do much without that heat. You can scrub a dub dub all day, but if it don't have that heat, see the heat helps to clean because what the heat does, it cuts the grease. Yeah. Oh, have mercy. The heat, it cuts. So what happens is, you know, when you got tough, you don't talk about tough grease, all this greasy stuff. When, 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 you can have the chemical, but the chemical ain't nothing without the fire. You, can, you try to wash some dishes with that cold water and put it in there. Your mama, gonna, she going to be on your head. Hey Amen. I remember I, 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 I used to wash this with cold water on purpose because I didn't want to wash them. Washing this with cold water. The need, need to be like, who washed these dishes? Why I still grease all this stuff? I put my head down. That's the, yeah, that was me. I didn't wash them with cold water because I didn't want to wash them. I'm in there rinsing it off and just throwing <laughs> So what I had to do was I had to pay my sister and brother because I didn't want to wash dishes. I paid the money. I said, man, y'all watch this, I'll give y'all $20. I was a manager at, at Dairy Queen. I said, man, I'll get y'all some ice cream, get y'all hamburger, whatever. When it's my week to wash dishes, I'll pay y'all. I don't want to wash these dishes. So, but when you put that heat on the grease, sometimes you put the heat on the grease, sometimes you can see the grease cutting up. You ain't even got to use the chemical yet. Oh, Lord, y'all ain't saying that. And in and, 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 and all actuality, you can use some cheap, uh, 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 what's it called? Dish liquid. You can use some cheap stuff, but if that water's hot, it'll clean it. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. That, that, that hot water, it'll start cutting through some stuff. So when you get the word down on the inside of you, what it do is start cutting through some stuff. The Bible said, go down there to uh, Hebrews chapter 4. Somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> Hebrews 4. Hey, Amen. I think that's 15. Uh huh? For we have not in high priest. Try 12. For the word of God. For the word of God. Is quick. Is quick. And powerful. Powerful. And sharp. And not only is it quick and powerful, but it is sharp. Right. Now think about fire. When fire ignites, it's quick. You get close to it, you'll see that it's powerful. Somebody shout hallelujah. Read, uh-huh. Sharper than any two-edged two sword. Any, any two sword uh -huh. Piercing even to the divining asunder of soul and spirit. Uh -huh. And of the joints and marrow. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Wait a minute. Oh See, God. now we're dealing with joints and what? Marrow. Where's marrow at? In the bone. So now I could see how Jeremiah got the word in his bone because, Lord, have mercy. The word just don't penetrate your skin and your heart, but the, the word penetrates the bone. It gets all the way. See, it's an inside of you, amen, that the doctors can't tell you about because they can't really see in it like that. And that's in the bone. They can do x rays and see the bone, but when you're talking about looking in the bone, they got to put something in it to draw stuff out of it. Draw that mirror out of the bone. Y'all ain't saying nothing. So he says that now this word is so good that it can chop up soul. It can chop up spirit. And not only chop up soul and spirit, but it can chop up the marrow in the bone. Yes. Man, what kind of word is that? That it'll go past, amen, the flesh yes. and go ahead and penetrate your bone. Oh, somebody say, I, I, I'm going to have me some holy bones. Holy bones. <laughs> All right. Then you'll see why in Ezekiel, the Bible was talking about when he spoke, that spirit, it got to the bones and started to connect the bones with the bones. But it was what he spoke out of his mouth that made the bones move. Oh, have mercy. So it was that spoken word that penetrated the bones. Somebody shout hallelujah. They got somebody say, I need a word to penetrate my bones. 
Not only does the word go through the bones, but the Bible said, and it is a discerner of thoughts and intents of your heart. So when that word get down in you, what it do? It change your intentions. Lord, help us. When your mind wondering to do something that you ain't supposed to do, the word will remind you. You'll hear Pastor Boy saying, I ain't supposed to do that there. Y'all it, it, it ain't saying nothing. It'll jump down in your mind because that spoken, that preached word, it done penetrated and got down in your thoughts. Got not only in your thoughts, but your intentions. See, thoughts and intentions are different. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Got that thought to have the thinking, but then the intention has the, it's the going to do. The intention, that's that, that's that, that's that thought that says this is what I'm going to do. But so you got the thought that just thinking, and then you got the thought that has an intent. So he said, I'll get into both of them, and I'll change it because I am the word. And that word is fire. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Aren't you glad that you got a word that you can't see, but it can penetrate you? See, the scripture can't penetrate you. You hear people say, oh, the word of God, you can chop people and slice them with the word of God. No. You reading that, it ain't going it, 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 it ain't, it ain't to slice you nice like that. You need a preached word, amen, that can do that. When you read it, you just look at it and say, okay, I ain't got to read that part. But when you listen it, you got to sit there and hear that word. That word will tear you up so good, you just, ow, ow, pastor, oh. Oh, you stepped on my toe. You stepped on my heart. You stepped on my leg. That word, that word of beat, man. You know, if you ain't getting a whooping when you come to church, something wrong. If you ain't getting no whipping when you come to church, well, Pastor, what you mean? That word, it, it, every time you hear the word, it, it's supposed to cut you. It's supposed to say you got to do a little better. It's supposed to, if you're not getting a message that pricks your heart, something's wrong. Amen. Now, over here, ain't nothing wrong with the word. So must be wrong, something wrong with your hearing. Amen. Ain't nothing wrong with the word because the priest's word is good. So the priest's word is good and there's nothing that's pricking you. Something must be wrong with your heart. Something must be wrong with your listening skills. Oh, somebody saw hallelujah. Now let me get y'all out of here. Let's read on. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. But all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Exodus 19 and 18. And we're going to go back to, to Hebrews and then I'm going to close. I didn't even get to get to all my scriptures, but I'm going to be teaching the yam Tuesday. All right, Laron. All right, so I'll get everything out then. Amen. <laughs> Y'all be here on time Tuesday. Oh, all right. And Mount Sinai, and Mount Sinai was all together uh -huh. on a smoke uh -huh. because the Lord descended upon it in fire. So when God descends, amen, he leaves a trail of smoke to show that he lingered there for a while. And that deals with, see, the fire, amen, is that natural. The smoke deals with the spiritual. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So then that says that deals with God in a manifested state where I could see. Amen. Then it deals with a spiritual form. Amen. See, when you get towards fire, I don't encourage you to touch it. But, you know, <laughs> if you get a little close to it, you'll be able to feel it in your hands. Amen. But you start going in the smoke like this, you can't feel anything. So it deals with the spirit of God and then it deals with the manifestation of God. But it's still God. So God is looked at as smoke. Not only smoke, but God is looked at as a fire. And so we got to get to a position where we meet God at the altar so that we can, amen, burn. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Amen. We're using the world. You were turning up everything, burning up everything. But now we need to burn for God. Get to a place where, Lord, I'm here and make me tender. And this is why the Bible talks about people being tender heart. You can't be tender unless you're on that fire for a long time. Y'all ain't saying nothing. So we got to get to a position, amen, where we're tender. And most tender meats, amen, I don't know if you ever cooked before, and I don't know if you know how to cook, but let me give you a secret. Meat comes tender based upon that season and the covering before you put it out there. It's called the marinating process. Hallelujah. So pastor, what are you saying? Well, 
in essence, make sure that you have a cover, but also get that seasoning. The Bible says that we are the salt of the earth. So we're already seasoned, amen, but now we got to get to a place where we can get tender so that we can hear instructions, so we can be obedient to God's word. A lot of y'all hard-hearted and you ain't tender-hearted because you don't pray enough. You're not in God's presence enough, so if somebody say something to you about a scripture, or somebody try to correct you, you get an attitude and don't want to deal with them, it's because you haven't, you're not tender. And the way I can get tender is by getting on my face, getting before the Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. Jesus is lit and allow to be lit in you. Don't ever get to a place where you think you're so good because you have been in church so long, you still need some. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. It don't matter how long you have been, you know, and like I said earlier today, when people down here seeking for the Holy Ghost, amen, if you're not helping, you need to be on your face crying out to God just like they are. You're not any better than anybody else. Just because you don't got filled with the Holy Ghost don't mean that you don't need more. Because everybody's cup dries up every now and again or it gets low because you're like a vehicle. Somebody shout hallelujah. Got to get your oil changed. Amen. Got to get those tires rotated. Amen. Got to get the right gas. Got to be full. Got to be filled so I can go somewhere. And people don't go nowhere in the spirit because they ain't got no gas in them. They ain't got no fire in them. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Even with vehicles, amen, they need a little heat to run. <laughs> That's why when you drive, if you drive for a long time, get out of that car and lay your hand on the engine. It'll be hot. Because the vehicle, it operates, but it needs that heat to be able to move. That's why you, have, you ever hear somebody say, it, well, people up north, we do this a lot. When it's cold outside, they say, hey, I'm going to go warm up the car. But what do you mean warm up the car? I got to turn it on and let it run. Right. To let it warm up before I get in there. You get in that car, amen, and it's not warmed up, amen. That, it could mess up your motor too. Oh, Lord. It can mess it up if you don't let it warm up. Some people just jump in their cars and tear off. It's freezing outside. They jump in there. Then that car starts to... <laughs> the oil probably in there look like lard. <laughs> because it's so cold so you don't allow it to heat up. And, and, and you can't even get heat in your car until the car heats up. It's freezing outside. You done cranked up the car, got in it, tear it off, and turned on the heat. Hey, man, what's wrong? My heat, but my heat ain't working. No, you ain't allowed to warm up yet. Somebody shout hallelujah. Everyone standing, I'm done here. Thank you, Jesus. If you're in a position where you feel like you're not close enough to the light, if you're in a position where you feel, amen, like you need your pilot light relit, you need to get back connected to the holes where the gas is. You can come. I want to pray with you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands as you're coming. And already have it in your mind and in your heart that you will receive. I believe that it's done. Believe that it's already, while you're close to the altar, just feel the heat. I feel you, Lord. Come on, lift your hands, lift your hands, lift your hands. Come on, put in your mind. As we lay hands on you today, just believe that the fire is there. Believe that it's already there. Glory to God. 
Come on, let's just start praying right where you are. Come on, pray right where you are. Ask God to feel his fire. Ask God to feel his presence. Ask God to burn up everything that's not like him that's in you. Jesus, we praise you. Here's shot by you. Keep going. Shot by you. Come on, let's pray. Matter of fact, grab the person's hand beside you. We about to create, hallelujah, a real fire. Because when we got enough fire, touching and agree. The power and the presence of God. Let's just start praying for the person right beside hey, glory. Start praying for the person right beside you, Lord. Let them feel your power. Let them feel that shia, Baba. Lord, hey, glory. Lord, do it, Jesus. Glory to your name, God. Hey, glory. Hey. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Come on, let's just cry out to him for a little bit. Hey, love my son. Glory. Hey, Come on, let's cry out too. Hey, glory. Glory, glory. 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 Lord, we want to feel your fire. 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 Lord, we want to feel your fire, God. Lord, And the ba 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 Glory Hey ba ba Glory Lord I want to feel your fire Hey ba 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 Oh God I want to feel your fire Jesus I wanna feel your fire, Lord. I wanna feel your fire. 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 I want to feel your fire. Yeah. I want to feel your fire. Hey, glory. Hey, hey. I want to feel your fire. Hey, glory. I want to feel your fire. Hey, Baba. I want to feel your fire. 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 Come on, lift your hands. I want to feel your fire. I want to feel your fire. Hey, glory. I want to feel your fire. Hey, ba ba ba. Hey, glory. I want to feel your fire. Come on, sir. I want to feel your fire. Hey, ba 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 ba. Hey, come on, sir. 
I want to feel your fire. Hey. I want to feel your fire. Consume me, Lord. Hey. Consume me, Lord. Hey. Shaya, ba, ba, ba. Consume me, Lord. Hey. Consume me, Lord. Hey. Ba, 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 ba. Consume me, Lord. Consume me, Lord. Consume me, Lord. Consume me, Lord. Hey, yeah, ba, 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 she. Consume me, Lord. Hey, ah, ba, ba, ba. Hey, ta, 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 ta. Consume me, Lord. Eta, ma, ha, ya. Consume me, Lord. Consume me, Lord. Hey, Consume me, Lord. Hey, oh, Consume me, Lord. I want to feel your power. Hey, I want to feel your glory. I want to feel. Consume me, Lord. Hey. Consume me, Lord. Consume me, Lord. Consume me, Lord. I want to feel your power. I want to feel your power. I want to feel your power. Hey, Consume me, Lord. Hey, yeah, Baba. Consume me, Lord. Consume me, Lord. Hey, yeah, Baba. I want to feel your power. Yeah, Baba. Hey, I want to feel your power. Hey. I want to feel your power. Consume me, Lord. Hey, Shabba, Baba. Consume me, Lord. Hey, glory. Consume me, Lord. I want to feel your power. I want to feel your power. Hey, yeah, Baba, Baba. I want to feel your power. I want to feel your power. I want to feel your power. Hey, Bobosha. Consume me, Lord. Hey, yeah, mama. Consume me, Lord. Consume me, Lord. Consume me, Lord. Consume me, Lord. I want to feel your power. 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 Consume me, Lord. Consume me, Lord. Consume me, Lord. I want to feel your power. I want to feel your power. Come on. I want to feel your power. 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 Consume me, Lord. 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 I want to feel your power. I want to feel your power. I want to feel your power. 
good to me, Lord. 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 Worship 